In the northwest area of Pompeii, with a garden view of Vesuvius, was a house the size of a palace. This is the largest house discovered in Pompeii. Found inside was a chest of coins, jewelry made from gold, as well as furniture of sculpted marble. Its floors were decorated with intricate mosaics, including what has been described as a masterpiece of ancient art. We will search for meaning in these mosaics, go through some of its ancient Roman household objects, as well as clues to the identity of its last inhabitants who died inside. This is James from History of Victorum. Join us as we explore the House of the Fawn in the city of Pompeii. The House of the Fawn is the largest house found inside the walls of Pompeii or in the city of Herculaneum. At about 30,000 square feet, it took up an entire city block. And there were two entrances on the street here, as well as space for four shops outside, which would have provided income to the house. There was occupation on the site as early as the 6th century BC, and the house with the layout we see today was constructed in the late 2nd century BC, one of the most prosperous periods for Pompeii. Its intricate mosaics and decoration were maintained throughout the centuries and were around 200 years old during the time of the eruption of Vesuvius. On the floor outside of its grand main entrance is the Latin word Have, which roughly translates to hail and be well. This is one of the most impressive entrances in Pompeii. Inside are remnants of decorated walls, and small columns here imitated the facade of a temple. Before exiting this hallway and entering into the house, on the floor, the visitor would have been greeted with an intricate mosaic with theater masks, flowers, and fruit. Like many of the mosaics from this house, this is now stored in the Museum of Naples. The visitor would have entered into its great atrium, the largest in Pompeii, which was over 50 feet high. If reconstructed, it would have looked something like this atrium found at the Samnite House in Herculaneum, with an upper colonnade imitating a second floor. An opening in the center would collect rainwater, and the pool below was decorated with a statue, which gives the house its name. This finely crafted statue is one of the rare surviving bronze statues from this time period in Pompeii. The statue is either of a mythical woodland creature known as a fawn, or probably more likely a satyr, who was a follower of the god of wine Dionysus, who was known to the Romans as Bacchus. Both satyrs and fawns were depicted as half-man, half-goat figures at the time. It may have originally played a silver flute, and was either in the center of the pool or possibly on the edge. The pool itself, known as an impluvium, is decorated with colored marble. The decoration of this house is known as the first style of Roman wall painting, which was popular in Pompeii from about 200 BC until 80 BC. It is characterized by these raised rectangular panels which were meant to imitate colored marble or expensive stones, which sometimes decorated the palaces of the Greek East. The House of the Fawn is in fact comparable to the size of some of these palaces, and it was actually larger than the royal palace at Pergamon in the East, although it is not quite as large as the sprawling villas outside the walls of Pompeii. The House of the Fawn was bombed during World War II, and some of the decoration was destroyed. Despite this, today, the house contains the most extensive surviving first style decoration found anywhere. The House of the Fawn is famous for the mosaics which decorated its floors, most of which survive in fairly good condition and are made from stones, sometimes just millimeters in length. Many of these mosaics were centered around its atrium, which would have been the most visible part of the house for visitors. This room here on the left contained a simple but charming mosaic of doves taking jewelry from a box. And on the right side was a detailed mosaic showing birds and fish stored upon several shelves. This may represent food stored on shelves when preparing for a banquet. A cat attempts to steal one of the birds from the shelves. These mosaics are thought to possibly represent the function of these two rooms, with this room possibly used as a pantry to store food, and the other may have been used to store valuables or other items. In the back of the atrium was this room known as the tablinum, which is the room for conducting business. 
this one originally had a large window, so like today, a visitor entering the building would have been able to see straight through this room, into the garden area, and to this structure which housed the great Alexander Mosaic. On either side of the tablinum were two dining rooms, believed to be summer and winter dining rooms. The one on the left was decorated with a mosaic of sea creatures, where the one on the right had a mosaic of a winged figure, drinking a cup of wine, riding an animal with the body of a tiger and the head of a lion. This is a very detailed mosaic, with its edges decorated with theater masks and garlands of leaves and fruit. It shows symbols of the god Dionysus, who is associated with the theater and often was depicted with large cats and wine. On the floor we can see a staff of Dionysus called a thrusus, which was topped by a pine cone or possibly leaves and berries. The dining room on the opposite side may have been a summer dining room and also had an entrance into the open air courtyard beyond. Its mosaic depicts 22 different types of sea creatures. We can see here a large sea bass, shrimp, Mediterranean moray, and others. In the center is a battle between an octopus and a lobster. This was perhaps alluding to a text written by Aristotle called A History of Animals, where he mentions the lobster being lower on the food chain than the octopus, but higher than other fish. In the corner of the atrium was a bedroom, which had an erotic mosaic of a satyr and a menad. These bronze jugs were also found in the atrium, with the depiction of the god Dionysus, who was pouring wine for a panther. The handles were fashioned in the shape of a human thumb. The space beyond the atrium was called a peristyle, which is basically a covered walkway supported by columns surrounding an open area. There were two peristyles in this house, the one we see here and even a larger one in the back of the house. This first peristyle contained 28 columns and a central garden with a fountain. We aren't sure exactly what this area originally looked like, but this decoration of sea nymphs riding seahorses is believed to have originally been in this peristyle. The highlight of the area was the famous Alexander Mosaic. It shows a conflict between Alexander the Great and Darius III of Persia, which took place in the 4th century BC. The mosaic is made of over a million pieces of small stones, less than 5 millimeters in length. The mosaic was made using a technique called opus vermiculatum, which was designed to mimic the brushstrokes of a painting. We even have details such as lighting and shadows. At about 9 feet by 17 feet, this was the largest mosaic ever found using this technique. Alexander is pictured here without a helmet, but wearing armor decorated with the head of a gorgon or medusa. He spears a Persian enemy. Darius is shown here with a white stripe on his tunic, which indicates royalty, as well as a stiff crown or tiara. Around his neck is a gold necklace fashioned in the shape of the heads of snakes. He is shown riding a four horse chariot, which is elaborately decorated. He is fleeing from battle, and a soldier in the chariot urges the horses on with his whip. Darius seems to gesture back to the soldier who possibly has sacrificed himself to help the king escape. Below, we can see a man who has fallen in battle, and he has one last glimpse of his own reflection in his shield. The Persian army, dress, and weapons are heavily detailed, and the focus of the mosaic almost seems as if it were a Persian tragedy rather than a famous Greek victory. Pliny the Elder mentions a Greek painting that was made for the king of Macedon around 316 BC that was of the highest quality and showed a battle between Alexander and Darius. It is possible that the mosaic may be a copy of this or another similar ancient painting made around that time period. This would explain the accuracy of the Persian dress and weapons. We're not sure which battle it is meant to represent, the most common opinion is that it represents the Battle of Issus in 330 BC, which if we were to look at a globe today, was fought around the area of modern day southern Turkey. In this battle, one of the Persian soldiers is said to have sacrificed his life to help Darius escape. Or it could possibly represent the Battle of Gagamela in 331 BC, which was the last conflict between Alexander and Darius and was fought around modern-day northern Iraq. Before the Battle of Gagamela, Alexander is known to have spent some time in Egypt, 
and on the floor leading up to this mosaic was another large mosaic scene of the Nile River with various animals. The Alexander mosaic was enclosed in a structure called an exedra, which is an area reserved for conversation. It is supported by finely decorated Corinthian style columns. On either side were two dining rooms, and we can imagine people congregating here after ancient banquets. Beyond this area was another, even larger open air peristyle, which was composed of 44 columns. Some finely decorated furniture was found in the area. This marble table stand was found, which is in the shape of a sphinx with the head of a woman. On top is a basket decorated with palm leaves, which would have supported a table. Another marble table was found here as well, with legs in the form of paws of a lion. This statue of a youth was discovered in the area, which is a copy of a famous Greek original made in the 5th century BC. We can see here another copy which is stored in the Louvre Museum. We aren't sure what it represents, but it has been suggested that it was a funerary monument for a young athlete. It is sometimes known as Narcissus, who is a youth who became enamored with his own reflection. On the far side was a raised area which may have been used for performances of some sort. Skeletons of two cows were also found near the back of this peristyle. Here we can see a long corridor, which separated the service quarters from the rest of the house. It had an unusually large kitchen, with an oven and a space for a household shrine which we can see here, as well as toilets, baths, and other rooms. The house of the fawn was large enough to contain two atriums, and this one also had an entrance out to the street. Found in this atrium were some household objects, such as the stove used for heating water, and this finely decorated portable heater, which was adorned with the winged heads of lions. A large money chest was found here as well, containing coins. Some rings found include this gold ring, which shows a figure with a crown, possibly the god Jupiter, or the Greek Zeus, and this garnet ring which is a bit hard to make out but shows Hercules in the Garden of Hesperides, which contained a tree with golden apples. This engraved stone was also found here, which is believed to be a depiction of Alexander the Great. Several skeletons were found in this atrium, which seemed to have been the last inhabitants of the house. One of these was wearing fine jewelry, such as these gold bracelets in the form of snakes, which would have originally had gemstones in their eye sockets as well as earrings and rings. She may have been the mistress of the house, carrying valuables and trying to escape the eruption. She wore this ring with the inscription Cassia. Another inscription was found elsewhere in the house of Cassius. The house of the fawn is believed to have been owned by the ancient Satiri family, from another inscription mentioning Satiris. It's believed that Cassia may have married into this family and lived in the house of the fawn at the time of the eruption. The House of the Fawn may be somewhat less preserved than other houses of Pompeii, but even with what remains we can still find glimpses of its former glory as the largest house of Pompeii, and some of the most finely crafted ancient mosaics found anywhere. Hope you enjoyed this, if you have anything else to add, let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.